Hi, and welcome to Fabric Bias. It is Monday, June 3rd, 2024, and this is not one of my bags. This is a gift that I got. My sisters and my mom went to visit our relatives, and they came back with gifts, and this is one of the gifts that I got. Just one. I got a few other things, too, on that, but I've been playing with this one because it's got a really interesting structure to it where the ends, the way it's boxed, is made by this interesting triangular structure at the ends, and so I've been looking at it and messing with it and um, playing with it just to try to figure out how did they do that because I haven't seen that before. And so I was turning it around and turning it around and looking at it. It's got lining and I can see they've got binding on the ends and I'm pulling on it and then guess what? Look at that. That bag structure, I do know. I have seen that before. As a matter of fact, I just watched a video from Christine's Home Affairs where she was showing she makes a um, an expandable shoe bag that looks just like this, except she doesn't use binding and she has a um, handle on it. So I thought, okay, that's where I'm going to start to try to figure out how to do this bag because maybe that's the answer and all I have to do is figure out how to make the inside the outside. So that's what I did. This is my little mini version of the line shoe bag that how to sew at, at Christine's Home Affairs. Unfortunately though, when I did this, it doesn't give me this, um, sorry, I just put it back together. It doesn't give me this triangle structure here, um, but it's my first clue in that direction. So let me show you what I did on this one. It does turn out super cute. Now she makes, um, she actually usually makes her bags unlined and she actually has two videos on how to make the lined one. So I need to go back to that original video and see if I if I make sew the lining in the way that she did it originally, if it doesn't give me this structure right here on that. So that's going to be my next step when I get a chance. Let me show you this one. So um, her bags are a lot bigger. Obviously, this, this is small. You can see with my hand, that's not going to... I mean, I guess I could carry small shoes, but I changed the size of it because I wanted to, to try to set it up to be about this size. And this one I measured is about a 10 inch zipper on it. And so I used a nine inch zipper on this one and I do have the lining on it. But as you open it up, you can see there's no seam right here on that. So let me show you all the features. So to figure out the size, I did go, go ahead and go with a nine inch zipper because it's closest I had to that one. I didn't want to go with 12. Because I want to make it small, I'm just trying to figure this this um, method out. And so, um, I started with a nine inch zipper, and I decided that was going to be dictate the width. And I want to go nine inches so it would go between stop and between stop. But as I was looking at it, I'm like, well, actually, it's even better because I'm going to leave the stop on here, which will shift my fabric over. If I'm far enough away from here, I don't have to worry about stitching on it. Although I'm going to definitely pay attention to it so I don't break my needle. And then that shifts this stop off the fabric when you sew it so you don't actually have to pay attention to that one because it's actually out of the fabric because you shifted this this stop forward this one goes forward too and um so you end up cutting that one off so nine inch was was what my width was going to be and so to figure out the exterior i knew i was going to go with a two inch drop inside here so i went in my head because i didn't have the bag i went okay so starting at the zipper i will go two inches out two inches in so it's two four six and then eight ten twelve fourteen and then back to the zipper would be sixteen so i did a nine inch wide by sixteen inch long exterior fabric and then for the lining because i didn't want to have that seam right here i knew i was going to have two different sizes um, for my interior pieces and so I went, okay, I want it to end up maybe on one of these folds here. And so mine is right here. And so I went, okay, in my head again, to get that fold, I'm going to do that fold. I'm going to go two, four, six, eight, ten. So I need the first cut to be ten and a quarter inches because I need to count for a seam allowance. And then that leaves ten to sixteen would be six inches. So that piece would be six and a quarter inches. So my interior pieces are nine inches by ten and a quarter and nine inches by six and a quarter. And then the um, other thing I did, I, I watched her video several times. So I'm pretty sure she didn't do it this way, but I wasn't following the video as I was sewing until I got to the ends. 
what I did was I sewed those two lining pieces together, leaving a four inch turning gap. And then I just kind of pinned the, the after I pressed it, I pinned the, the turning gap together so it would stay closed um, as I was putting it on. And then I put the lining and the exterior fabric onto the zipper. And then I followed the directions on the end, except I added the handle later because I didn't put the handle on. And then when I got done with it, I thought, oh, it really does need a little handle um, on that. So, so you would want to definitely put the handle on ahead of time because it, I mean, I was able to add it and, but it's definitely the smarter move to do it the other way. So, so again, there's my interior. There's my seam tucked on the side and it comes out super, super cute. It just doesn't give me the corners that I want. It doesn't give me that nice triangle effect. So I'm going to have to figure out a different way to do that. And like I said, I'm going to go to her other video first because if someone's already done it, why reinvent the wheel? Let me show you how much stuff this fits. So rotary cutter and let's see, a bunch of pins. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, little screwdriver. I don't even know where I got that. A um, little pair of scissors. Seven. Let's see. A bunch of stuff. Oh, glue stick. And um, put these in here. These are on really good. And oh. There you go. I think that's enough for now. I could probably get some more in there even. But all of that in this bag that expands through here. Hold on. So... And then when you go to store the bag, you get all your stuff out of there. It will lay nice and flat. And there it is. I hope you like it. I hope that wherever and whenever you're at, you're having a great time. And thanks for watching.